Hi everyone, in this video we'll be talking about buffers and how they work. So let's first talk about what a buffer is. A buffer is a chemical system which resists changes in pH when a small amount of acid or base is added. The buffer contains either a comparable amount of weak acid and its conjugate base, or it can be a weak base and its conjugate acid. It's important to recognize that you cannot create a buffer with a strong acid or base, and we'll discuss why that is later. So here we have an example of a solution that contains weak acid and its conjugate base in similar concentrations. We have 0.1 moles per liter concentration of HF and 0.1 moles per liter of NAF, which is its conjugate base. This could be considered a buffer. Similarly, if we had 0.1 moles per liter of ammonia, and 0.1 moles per litre of ammonium chloride, this could similarly be considered to be a buffer because it has a weak base and it's conjugate acid. So what does a buffer do? So a buffer reduces the change in pH when an acid or a base is added to the system. So it minimises the pH changes if we add an acid, and it minimises the pH changes if we add a base. If we look on the graphs on the right hand side, this top one demonstrates to us what happens to the pH as we add an increasing volume of acid. Normally we would expect that there's a steep change in pH, but what we actually see is that when a small amount of acid is added, the pH changes very slightly. But when we add a large amount of acid, the pH will suddenly start to decrease at a steep rate. Similarly with the base, if we add a small amount of base, then the pH change is minimal. However, when we add a large amount of base, this change is going to be quite steep. We'll explain why this is later. So we know that a buffer resists more changes in pH. Let's talk about what the mechanism of that resistance is. Why is it that we need a comparable amount of weak acid or base and its conjugate acid or base? So looking at this example using HF, remembering that HF is a weak acid, the ionization of HF given by this equation will be in equilibrium. So when we add acid, we are increasing the H3O concentration. If we are increasing the H3O concentration, by Le Chatelier's principle, we should expect that the equilibrium position is going to shift to the left to minimize the change which has been caused as we have increased the H3O concentration. As a result of this, we are going to be decreasing the H3O concentration and the H3O concentration overall is going to remain relatively constant. Let's think of the other scenario where we're adding a base. If I'm adding base, I'm introducing hydroxide ions into the solution. Looking at this equation here, the addition of the hydroxide is going to react with the H3O to reform water, which means that our water concentration is going to be increasing. By Le Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium system is going to shift to the right-hand side in order to increase the H3O concentration, which has been decreased through the neutralization by the hydroxide ion. Therefore, the pH change is minimized as the H3O concentration again remains relatively constant. We did say that it's important to notice that this resistance in pH change is true only for a small amount of acid or base only. Looking at our example of hydrogen fluoride again, we're going to consider what happens when an excessive amount of acid has been added. So as I'm adding acid, I'm increasing the H3O plus concentration. In order to reverse this, the hydronium ion must react with the conjugate base, which is the fluoride ion, in order to reform HF. However, if I continue to add more and more H3O plus, eventually, because the fluoride ion has a fixed concentration, we are going to eventually run out of F minus, in order for us to reform HF, the hydrofluoric acid. This means that at some point, when the F- has decreased completely, the buffering capability is going to be gone, and there is not going to be conjugate base in order for us to buffer any changes as we add more H3O. This is why when we look at this pH chart here, we notice that when we add a large and increasing amount of acid, the pH starts to decrease more and more. The same case is true for when we're adding too much base. So when we're increasing base, we're increasing the hydroxide ion concentration, which as we said earlier, is going to neutralize H3O plus in order to reform H2O. H3O plus has a fixed concentration, which means that as we keep adding OH, 
we are going to be decreasing the concentration of this until eventually it gets completely depleted and we end up adding OH minus. In the same occurrence, the buffering capability is decreased when we add a large amount of base and therefore the pH is going to be exponentially increasing as we add more and more base, although it has been minimized in the beginning. What we can now conclude about buffers is that we need to have weak acid in order to buffer base addition. And in order to do this, we have to have a conjugate base for the buffering effect to occur. So this means that if we deplete either the weak acid or the base, then the buffer is no longer going to have its buffering capability and the pH changes are going to increase exponentially. This is why we want to have a buffer containing either a comparable, if not equal amount of weak acid and conjugate base in order for it to be effective. And the same goes for weak base and its conjugate acid. So strong acids cannot be used to make a buffer because they completely dissociate or ionize. Here we have an example of hydrochloric acid HCl. HCl in water is going to exist entirely as H plus and Cl minus ions. It is not in equilibrium, and therefore when we add OH minus, while it will neutralize H plus to increase the pH, the equilibrium cannot shift back to the right hand side in order to recreate the H plus ion. This means that we cannot buffer this against the addition of either an acid nor a base. The same issue occurs where we have a strong base. A strong base will completely dissociate or ionize. So in this example of sodium hydroxide forming sodium plus ions and hydroxide ions, this will neutralize the H plus ions when we add acid to it. However, because it is not in equilibrium, this cannot reverse the change by shifting back to the right hand side. We choose a variety of buffers for particular solutions. But the buffer that is going to be most effective is when the pH is very close to the pKa of that weak acid or pKb for the weak base. This is because our definition of pKa is that pH equals to pKa where the weak acid of the buffer is 50% ionized. 50% ionization means that weak acid or weak base concentration is going to be equal to its conjugate base or conjugate acid concentration. So when the concentration of the weak acid equals to the conjugate base, we now know that pH equals to the pKa. So let's use acetic acid as an example. The pKa of acetic acid, CH3COOH, is 4.77. So what this means is that at a pH of 4.77, the concentration of acetic acid is equivalent to the concentration of its conjugate base, which is the acetate ion. So the buffer consisting of the acetic acid and the acetate ion is going to be most effective when the pH equals to 4.77. The relationship between pKa and pH is also going to be explained by the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which is a derivative of the Ka formula. We know that for generic acid HA, which dissociates into H plus and A minus, the Ka is going to be equal to the products over the reactant. From here, we can rearrange this formula by multiplying HA over A minus on both sides in order to get H plus on the right hand side. We can then take the negative log of both sides and using our log laws, we can notice that the negative of log H plus is going to be equal to the negative log Ka plus the negative of log HA on A minus, which is why it's negative log Ka minus log HA on A minus. From here, we know that the negative log of the H plus concentration is the pH. We know that the negative log of Ka is the pKa. So all we are left with is pH equals to pKa minus the log of HA over A minus. However, we can also flip this by using our log laws, which means that pH equals to pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. Now the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is not given in the NASA formula sheet. However, it can be used for calculating equilibrium concentrations given a pKa value. This formula can also be used for questions which assume that the initial concentration is equal to the equilibrium concentration of a particular system. If we consider the generic buffer system consisting of the weak acid HA and conjugate base A-, we can consider what happens when we add or remove acid. So when we add acid, we remember that the equilibrium is going to shift to the left-hand side. This means that we are going to increase the HA concentration, 
and decrease the A- concentration. So we know that where the pH is less than the pKa, the HA concentration must be greater than the A- concentration. In the same but opposite scenario, when pH is greater than pKa, this means we have introduced more OH-, which means that the equilibrium is shifted to the right-hand side. Therefore, our conjugate base concentration is now going to be greater than our acid concentration. Here we will look at an example of a buffer question. We're given that the pKa for hypochlorous acid is 7.5. The question says that a buffer consists of equal concentrations of HOCl and NaOCl. What is the pH of this buffer? NaOCl is the conjugate base of the acid HOCl. Since our conjugate and acid concentration is equal, that means that it must be 50% ionized. We know that pKa is equal to the pH at 50% ionization. Therefore, since this is at 50% ionization, we know that the pH must equal to 7.5. In this next example, the buffer consists of 1 mole per litre of HOCl and 0.75 moles per litre of OCl. The question asks us to calculate the pH of this buffer. If we remember our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we know that pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the concentration of the conjugate base over the acid. If we plug this into our calculator, what we should get is this equals to 7.5 minus 0 0.12, and that's going to give us a value of 7.38. The number of significant figures is 2, which means that we are going to give our pH as two decimal places. Several buffers also exist in natural and biological systems. Human blood uses the carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate buffer system. The reason why this buffer system is necessary is because cellular respiration produces carbon dioxide, which then will dissolve into blood, and that's going to produce carbonic acid as given by our equation. This buffer is going to be necessary because it helps to regulate the pH of the blood which affects the structure of cells and proteins that are in the body. Cells will use the phosphate buffer system as internal fluids of cells contain dihydrogen phosphate and its conjugate base hydrogen phosphate. Now similar to the buffers in human blood, the buffer in the cell will help to regulate pH and that's going to allow for biological enzyme functions to continue. Swimming pools use the carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate buffer system to regulate the decrease in pH which is formed by the production of carbonic acid via the dissolution of carbon dioxide in water. This can similarly be seen in the ocean where the waves roll in the carbon dioxide to form carbonic acid. Natural body waves also maintain pH using this carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate buffer system. This is because pH needs to be maintained since many different forms of aquatic life are pH sensitive. This means certain fish or microorganisms that live on coral reef may die out if the pH is too low.